Okay, so today what I want to try to do is talk about managing gain on the quad cortex. And I've got a few questions about this, so I wanted to try to put something together. And I'm going to start this out with a little bit of a disclaimer. You're going to hear the words usually and most of the time and typically a lot during this video. There's always exceptions to the rules. There's always multiple ways to achieve the same result when you're talking about the quad cortex. And I'm going to share the approaches that I use and I found have been successful for me. That doesn't mean it's the only way to do it. It doesn't necessarily even mean it's the best way to do it. It's just the way that I do it. And I find that it works. And I think I get pretty successful results out of it. But there may be other ways to do it that work as well. Um, I'm happy to hear them in the comments below. I'm always looking for new tricks on how to do these kinds of things on the quad cortex. But I'm going to try to do my best to kind of talk about the way I approach it. But keep in mind, there might be other ways to do it. So the first thing I want to talk about is if you pull down the menu here, come on. There are global volume settings and level settings you can make both in the inputs. You can just press them here. You can do the out, different outputs. You can even manage the send and returns. So these are all here to use. I will say this, I have never adjusted these ever. Uh, in fact, I never come to this menu. And I don't think I've opened up this menu for since I bought the device before today. I don't ever use it. Um, there is a global EQ here. I don't typically use the global EQ either. I do everything within the presets as much as I can because each preset is different in my opinion. So these are here. Um, they, they could definitely be useful, but it's not something that I use in overall managing of my device. So the preset I have here that, that I want to use today is actually an older preset because it's using many of the approaches that I found work for me in balancing gain and volume and those kinds of things. So we've got a few things going on here. We've got a, a dual stereo amp. So we're using a Mesa Boogie Lone Star, if you couldn't tell from the preset name. We've got several gain stages up in front. We've got a compressor and three overdrive pedals and a chorus in front. And then behind it, we've got an EQ. We've got some delay. We do have a compressor after the amps. We'll talk about why I'm doing that. And we've got a, a reverb. And then we've got a parallel path that's adding in some more wet. And then I've got a utility gain block to balance out some of the levels. And we're going to talk about that as well. And then we're going to a multi-out. So the multi-out, you can adjust the overall output volume of the preset here. And so this brings me to kind of my first rule, if you want to call it that, of managing gain and volume on the quad cortex. When you're adjusting levels, the further towards the end of your preset you adjust the volume, the less likely you are to impact how your preset sounds. And conversely, the more towards the front of your preset you adjust levels, the more likely you are to impact how it's sounding and how it's and how it's saturating and compressing and those kinds of things. So generally, if all you want to do is adjust the volume levels of your preset, I would start towards the back. So if, for example, you have two presets that you're using live and there are differing levels and you need to balance them so the front of the house guy isn't getting annoyed with you, I would come to the output block of your preset and adjust the volume here and balance them that way. You're less likely to make any adverse impacts to how your gain is sounding and things like that if you're adjusting the volume here. The other thing I'll say is here, if I play a little bit on this preset, you can see that overall this preset is pushing the boundaries of clipping. So let's talk about overall preset volume. So first off, I'll start off by saying, if you'll notice, I had the volume at 100. So, so my understanding is if you reduce the volume knob at the main knob like that, look below 100, what's actually happening is there's some attenuation going on and that could adversely affect the tone of the preset. So best practice, from my understanding, is keep that at 100, and then you would control the overall volume of what's in the room by where you're sending the signal. 
So in my case, I have studio monitors that I'm running XLR outputs to, and I just manage the volume on those studio monitors. And they're set to a certain volume, and the Quad Forex X is always on 100, and that's how they're set. Now, if I'm just practicing and I want to reduce the volume, I might reduce this a little bit just to keep it quiet in the house or something like that. But for the most part, I keep it pegged on 100. And generally, I try to make my presets as loud as they can be without clipping. So I try to keep all my presets pretty loud and I'll push the volume until it's where I think it needs to be until I start to get some clipping and then I'll back off. So that's my general approach is to make the presets as loud as I can. So let's start off by talking about the way that pedals and amps deal with gain and volume in the real world. And I will say that most of what I learned about how this actually works, I learned from Dan and Mick on that pedal show. So if you've never watched their channel, you should go subscribe. There's so much great information about the way pedals react with amps and different kinds of amps and how to use gain and volume and boost. And there's all kinds of great stuff there. So in general, I would say the more you can learn about how these devices should work in the real world, the more you can understand how to expect it should work on a quad cortex, even though it's not 100% accurate. And we'll talk about that in a second as well. But generally, the, the same rules apply, and you can bring that to the quad cortex, and then you can build presets and start to adjust from there. So I would encourage you to go watch the pedal show and learn about gain and boost and amp overdrives and those kinds of things. And you'll really start to understand how these things should interact. But generally, when we're talking about gain and volume, the first thing to talk about is amps have something called headroom. So headroom in its most basic definition is the amount of signal that the amp can take in before it starts to distort, before it starts to saturate and compress and kind of squeeze the signal down. So amps that are high headroom are like Fender amps and say some of the two rock clean amps or the high watt amp and things like that. And then amps like Marshalls and Boxes and things like that are typically gonna start to compress more. They're, they're lower headroom. And when you give them a big signal, they're gonna squish it down and compress and bring distortion. And then if you put pedals in front of those amps, those pedals can boost the signal going in. So not only can the pedal do their own distortion, but they can boost the output level into the amp so the amp does more distortion if it's a low headroom amp. So a lot of times when you're boosting signal volume into the front end of a low headroom amp, you're not actually getting more volume out of the amp, you're getting more saturation and compression. And I go through this because what we expect is the quad cortex devices in the preset to work the same way that they do in real life. And I will say generally they do. So the amp models in the quad cortex, this should be high headroom amps, typically react that way. They're not, they're not overdriving as much, they're not compressing as much. And the amps that are lower headroom are reacting kind of the way you would expect as well. They're, they're starting to distort more. But I will say that they don't necessarily handle volume in the same way. They do a little bit, but not as much, since they need a little help to kind of do what's called sag, which is where that's where the amp just stops getting louder and just kind of caves in a little bit. The amp models don't do that very well. And we'll talk about put, using a compressor to try to mimic that here in a second. So let's run through the general setup of this preset, and then we'll dive into the gain levels along the way. So what we've got here is we're running a dual amp model. These are Lone Stars. I've got two different kinds. I've got a Tweed and a Normal, and they're running into two, two by 12 cabinets. And then I've got an EQ setting here where we're managing the high cut. We've got a delay. We'll talk about the compressor in a second. We've got a reverb. And then I've got a wet path where I've got a 100% delay here and it's mixing back in with a drier path up here and then it's going out. And we'll talk about the gain block in a second. So in front of these amps, I've got a compressor. You can see here, the volume is being pushed a little bit here. If you look at this pedal, again, the volume is up. If we look at this one, a little bit of volume. So I'm using the overdrive pedals not only to add gain 
using their distortion, I'm pushing the output of those pedals to push the amps harder to try to get the amps to also add more saturation. So for example, here's kind of a cleanish tone. All I'm doing is using an RC booster. And you can see here, I've got the gain really low and I'm pushing the volume because what I'm trying to do is just fill in the sound of the Lone Stars a little bit. And so if we add in the compressor in front of that, and so the compressor is not only compressing, it's adding a little bit of volume, which means it's going to push the overdrive on the RC booster a little bit and push the overall signal to the amp. The same thing with our uh, BB preamp pedal here. Again, not much gain, pushing the volume a little bit. And then if we add the RC booster in front of that, again, it's, it's pushing that volume into the BB preamp, which is going to increase the gain of that pedal, plus increase the signal into the amp which is going to push the amp more. And then you've got the obsessive drive, which is adding a good amount of gain here, and a good amount of volume into the amp. that with the RC booster. You'll hear that there's not as much volume lift from the RC booster as we were getting before. That's because the excessive drive is kind of absorbing it a little bit and it's really just making it more gainy. <laughs> So you can see there how all those pedals are kind of interacting with each other and as you adjust the volumes, you can push the volumes into the other pedals, make them saturate more, and push the amps more to get more saturation. And the reason that works is because the amps, the level of gain is like right in that edge of breakup or maybe just past the edge of breakup. So Lone Stars have a decent amount of headroom, but by having the gain at five, it allows me to push them into a certain amount of overdrive so that they'll react best to the gain coming into them. And this brings me to kind of my second general rule. All the levels that you would adjust prior to the output level of the amp model, so that's all these volumes here and the gain and the gain and drive of the upfront, and even the, the volume of the compressor. So everything that comes before you get to this output level of the amp affects saturation and compression more than volume. That doesn't mean that when you push those, they don't increase the volume and obviously it depends on the amp that you're using. If you're using a high headroom amp model, you're going to get more volume through. But generally, but generally any level adjustment I do prior to this output level of the amp is more about affecting the sound of the preset and the level of saturation and compression than it is volume. So if I want to adjust volume, usually the first place I go is the output level of the amp. And the reason that is, is because all the other blocks that come after typically do not react to signal level all that much. They're just going to take in the input signal and give it through the out. And that's a little bit different than the real world. So, you know, a real world cabinet, if you give it a louder signal, you, you will change the sound a little bit because of the way the, you know, the air is moving and, and, and all the aspects of the, the way the cabinet works. An IR is not going to do that. An IR is really just an EQ on the signal coming in. So all you're doing really is adjusting the signal and the cab blocks 
on the glycortex are not going to react to volume or signal levels the way a real cabinet might. So let's talk about this compressor here. So the reason I have this here is because of that volume level management that I was talking about before. So if I turn this off, when I move through different levels of gain, pretty good job of converting signal level into gain and compression like they should. But the volume is still going up more than I would expect or want to. And that's especially true if you're trying to manage your volume on your guitar. So if I, for instance, take this lead tone, that's a full volume on a guitar. If I back it up halfway, You can hear that we're getting less saturation compression, but the volume is also dropping quite a bit. So what I like to do is put this compressor, and I did a whole video on this. It's about mimicking sag on the amp and using a compressor like this. You turn this on, and it gives you a little bit of compression on the back end. You're still getting volume changes but they're a little bit less because what we're doing is we are compressing the signal after the amp and kind of mimicking the way an amp would sag. And so that's what I use the compressor for on the back end. And the last thing I want to talk about is what I'm doing here with this um, block here is I'm wanting to have a add in a wet path that's separate from the drier path. It's not really dry. There's a d delay and reverb on the initial path, but I'm at, going through an extra delay as some extra ambience. And so one of the things I found is when I do that, I was getting a huge drop in volume, mostly because when I'm mixing the wet path back in, I'm trying to bring the wet path volume down, and so I'm losing overall volume of the preset. And that's why I added in this utility gain. You can see I'm pushing it 6 dB to bring that volume back up. When you're doing splits like this, where you're doing stereo amps, that's usually okay, because an amp is adding enough volume back in that you can manage it that way. You still lose volume on each path, but when you add them together, they, they sound like a full signal again. When you're splitting into a wet dry, I find that I tend to lose volume quite a bit and I need to use one of these utility gain blocks to kind of add it back in. But you can see I'm doing it as far towards the end of the preset as I can because I don't want to impact how things sound. So as usual, this preset is available on my Cortex Cloud account. Feel free to grab it and, and see what I'm doing with some of the volume levels. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any other questions about this, let me know. I tried to cover as much as I could think of here, uh, but there's obviously situations that maybe I didn't consider that you might have questions about. Like I said before, there's a lot of different approaches you could take to the preset volume and gain levels, and it's difficult to have you know, one general approach on how to do this. But I found that some of these techniques worked for me and helped me keep kind of my presets under control. I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.